hateful peacemakers. That's the focus of tonight's angle. The rule is that you don't negotiate with terrorists, right? You don't give them an inch because they'll take a mile. In the case of Hamas, we know they'll use a lull in the fighting to burrow in, resupply, and stoke more anti-Israel sentiment worldwide. To survive, Hamas needs a break in the action. They know it, and Hezbollah knows it. Now, remember, their goal is to destroy Israel, period. And they'll use endless pro-Palestinian propaganda to keep Hamas alive, which keeps their dream of destroying the Jewish people alive. And despite claiming to be staunch supporters of Israel, the White House is playing right into their hands. Secretary of State Tony Blinken flew to Israel again with the clear message to Netanyahu, stop. Supposedly, they just want more time to get more hostages released. Of course, we all want the hostages released. But as the angle predicted, Hamas is using its hostages as bargaining chips, releasing a few yesterday, which the administration cited was proof that their efforts were paying off. And then anonymous administration officials told CNN that in conversations with Netanyahu, Biden has warned that Israel will be judged harshly by the international community if it doesn't take steps to significantly ease humanitarian suffering and minimize Palestinian civilian deaths. Now, this is what you have to understand. Biden's team is leaking these details because they know that they're losing political support at home from his pro-Palestinian voters, who, as we've seen, have taken to the streets because they're trying, the Biden people are, they're trying to send signals of, we hear you, to the pro-Hamas wing of their own party. But are Biden's calls for this temporary pause actually working? Well, more from CNN. Netanyahu explicitly rejected some of those calls on Friday as Blinken visited Israel and met with the Israeli war cabinet. The prime minister specifically said that his government opposed any temporary ceasefire in Gaza unless Hamas freed all the hostages it holds. Well, of course, Netanyahu is making the right call for his people and the survival of his nation. The idea that you can trust Hamas to have any humanitarian instincts is absurd. They're still firing into Israel. Hamas has been uh, using mortars to hit this area and also small rockets. Just uh, a, a lot of shrapnel marks on this wall. You can see all of these holes here. All of this on the side of a kindergarten. It's painted these colors because normally in times of war, before Hamas committed the massacre against southern Israel, kids were going to school here. This was a, a kindergarten that was used by this southern community. Most have evacuated since then. Uh, but you can see, see there are still soldiers and, and police officers in this area because it sits just over the border from the Gaza Strip. But don't expect far-left Democrats on Capitol Hill to care about what's happening and still happening to Israel. 17 of them signed on to a resolution by Cory Bush that reads like it could have been written by that Hezbollah leader himself, calling for an immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine. And four other House Democrats are calling for a straight ceasefire. And over in the Senate, what's happening? Well, when pressed on his view of what Israel should do, Tricky Dick Durbin used his typical weasel words. Is a ceasefire needed now? I think it is, at least uh, under, uh, in the context of both sides agreeing. Oh, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. He knows that Israel is not agreeing and can agree to a ceasefire. But Durbin also knows that the political price his party could pay in next year's election is significant. So he's kind of trying to have it both ways there. Well, when I was thinking about this today, I thought, isn't it a good time to ask this question? Why have Democrats taken such a different approach with the war in Ukraine? It is impossible to explain to my constituency why, when the Ukrainians are in the midst of fighting and dying every single day for their nation, that this Congress somehow or another managed to pass a spending bill and not include more funding for the Ukrainian cause. Now, where's the peacemaker? Thousands of lives have been lost, at least 9,000 civilians, but probably more in Ukraine, and hundreds of billions of dollars in damage that, you know, we're going to be called on to fix. And yesterday, its own defense chief in Ukraine 
said the situation is at a stalemate. So why didn't Biden call for a humanitarian pause there at any point in the last, what, 21 months or so? Well, there's plenty of suffering. And more U.S. funding is only going to ensure that the suffering continues. If there were ever a case where interested parties should call for a pause to conduct negotiated settlement, Ukraine is it. In fact, last year, when progressives on the Hill did urge Biden to negotiate with Russia, boy, they were told quick to back off. And uh, they've been quiet ever since on Ukraine. But with Israel, it's different. Well, the truth is, the squad types don't believe Israel should be allowed to defend itself. Even though a month has now passed since Hamas carried out that attack, slaughtering 1,400 innocent civilians. Now, we should offer military advice there if asked, but otherwise, stay out of this counteroffensive. And the advice that we do give should not be based on what Democrats' elections prospects are next year. But when it comes down to it, Biden doesn't really have a foreign policy. They have a plan for Biden's reelection. And they do just whatever they think is going to help with that. The White House knows the hard left hates Israel, and they're afraid that the war is going to hurt them politically. But the hard left likes Zelensky. So that war can just go on forever. As long as the Democrats are concerned, they don't care. But a real president would focus on what is best for the United States. Well, of course, we don't have a real president. We have a figurehead president surrounded by folks who want him reelected so they can make down the road a lot of money as lobbyists. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.